right now. Okay, great. So uh, we're going to be talking about a video, Is Allah Satan? And, I, and if you look at it, 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 you could say to the layman, it can kind of sound very convincing, you know? And so, uh, and so let's, we can go through the video and they present many arguments. And um, so, yeah, the first thing I think, what was the first issue which you mentioned, which kind of uh, aroused your attention about what they mentioned in the video? I talk share my desktop here. We could take a look at it together. Sure. Uh, yeah, the video actually is here, right here. It's got like nineteen thousand views or something like that. I think the first thing you mentioned, they said um, that Allah describes Himself as the great, as a chayrul uh, makrin, meaning the the best of the deceivers or something like that, right? Well, uh, it says that. Uh, yeah, it says that. It says that. Allah calls himself the destroyer, the yeah. restrainer, the bringer yeah. of death, uh, which, I mean, all of that sounds on its face, <laughs> especially to the Christian or the layman, like you said. I mean, that sounds pretty terrifying. It, and it mm -hmm. also says that yeah. Allah's greatest uh, uh, horrid sight that he sees on the day of resurrection is a man who calls himself the king of kings. Well, mm -hmm. if you know any if you know anything about the Bible, uh, Jesus refers to himself as the King of Kings. And of course, Paul refers to him as the King of Kings. Uh, uh, John, the apostle refers to him as the King of Kings. And so again, as a, as a Christian, as a layman, when, when you see that, it sounds very convincingly that Allah is, is actually Satan. And, and so the, I guess the overall arching point of the video is to try to convince the viewer that Muslims are worshiping Satan. Right. And so, right. <laughs> and, and, so and, and if I were a Muslim, and I'm strongly considering converting to Islam, by the way, in spite of all of this, but we'll get to that here later. Uh, uh, if I were a Muslim, I mean, that, that's a strong attack against Islam. That's mm -hmm. a strong, I mean, that's a strong attack against Muslims, against Islam. And I, I, I'm actually surprised that more Muslims are not, you know, defending themselves against this. Cause I mean, right. that's, I mean, that, that's a strong accusation. And so, uh, when I first saw it, it just, uh, you know, I was considering, uh, I, I was interested in Islam more and more. Uh, I don't know if you remember our last conversation yeah. we had and, but when I saw that, it kind of, you know, stopped it dead in its tracks. And I'm just being honest with you. And I, and I didn't really look into it that much further, but, right. but now, but now where I'm at now, I look at all the problems we have here in America with, be it with race relations or just a number of different things. And then I look at how Muslim countries don't have a lot of these same problems. And that really, that, that, that is piquing my interest in Islam. Sure. I mean, we don't, we don't, I mean, Muslim countries don't have the same problems with crime. They don't have the same on a number of different things. And, uh, and, and another thing, which I simply cannot look past is there is probably 20,000 different forms of Christianity in the world, mm -hmm. uh, different, uh, schools of thought with Christianity, different interpretations of Christianity, uh, Christians really don't agree on uh, the identity of Jesus. Some of them believe he was God. Some of them don't believe he was not the son of God. I mean, the Jehovah's Witnesses claim that Jesus is the Archangel Gabriel. And so, right. and so to be a Christian in America, you have first, first of all, you have to decide who you believe Jesus is. And then you have to pick between all of these thousands and thousands of schools of thought. I mean, which one is right? Which one is correct? And, and I'm just being honest that a lot of this is, is hard for me right now because I've been raised as a Christian in America. It's the only religion that I know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, putting aside all of one's personal biases and things that he's been raised with, if we're going to do some critical thinking skills, we have to examine this. It's just an issue that is too important to ignore. Right. We can't ignore that there is so many different forms of Christianity that 
that presents a problem. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a fact. And if we all agree that there's only one God, I mean, because Christians will tell you they believe in, in uh, monotheism, but at the same time, they believe in the Trinity and, you know, and all that. So we have to examine this and we have to look at it. And, sure. uh, you know, plus I've been, you know, looking at uh, Islam, how the Quran, for the most part, has been preserved in its entirety mm-hmm. throughout through centuries and centuries. And, and whereas in Christianity, you've had uh, parts of the Bible that have been taken out, parts of the Bible that have been added in. I mean, most Christian scholars will admit that Christianity has been changed right. on more than one occasion. Same thing with, with Judaism. Uh, so if we're looking at this objectively, we have to address that. And, and, and for the person who may be watching this, I'm not saying you have to, you know, uh, convert to any religion, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, whatever, just from watching this, but you have to examine that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, so, and, and that's the stage I'm at. I'm examining all this because when it comes to eternity, when it comes to who God is and what God wants for humanity, I can't think of a more important question that right. somebody needs to examine in their life. And so when I watched that video, uh, uh, a lot of Satan, and there's a number of them on there. I mean, oh, you yeah. can just, I mean, they're, they're, that's not the only one. And, uh, but that's why I wanted to talk to you today because uh, I've watched some of your videos on YouTube and you've done actually quite a few debates. You've, de- mm-hmm. you've debated David Wood, you've debated uh, Jay Smith, Bill Warner. These are people who have been probably the strongest critics of Islam. And so I thought who better to talk to. Okay, so let's, well, yeah, we'll take it from the top. And uh, it's always good to hear, you know, from like both sides of the, of the, of the argument. And then you can, know, you'll be able to kind of make a more better uh, a more intelligent decision. So, okay, we'll start with the first one. Allah is, oh, God is the best of the deceivers. And they try to point and say, look, Satan is a deceiver. Uh, God, Allah is calling himself a deceiver or something like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Now, if you remember in, in one of my debates, I pointed out inside the last one, which I actually asked you to watch, it, is Muhammad prophet a mention in the Bible? I said, at no point will my opponent bring documented facts or any kind of reference that is because christianity is not a fact-based religion it is an interpretation-based religion such will be the case of what you are going to find over here so when we when we look at the video and you look at the verse which they quoted for us let's just you know allah is the greatest of all deceivers let's just take a look at chapter 8 verse 30 over here Mm -hmm. here is chapter 8 verse 30 Uh, Okay, so in fact, let me see. Why is this taking my full screen here? Give me one second here. There you go. Okay, chapter 8, verse 30. As we can see, I just, uh, we got Surah 8, verse 30. And now this is a pretty cool website. It has over 60 different translations of the Quran. Uh, We'll just go through some of them, like what they have generally accepted translations. You have also translations by Christian missionaries. You've got controversial uh, translations. Uh, we got non-Muslim Orientalists like George Sales, Arthur John Arbery, many good translations over here. So mm-hmm. out of all of these 60 translations, not a single one of them translated that Allah is the best of the deceivers. So we, and the closest I found, let's do a control F. Okay. E-E-C. E-I-V-E-R. The closest I have found was Samira in her translation. She mm-hmm. wrote the world best of deceivers, but what she meant is schemer. Oops, what just happened here? What she actually meant was schemer. They go back over here. Mm-hmm. That's it. One, oh, sorry about that. One out of the 60 translations, this is the closest we could even come to that. It's ridiculous. Now, why are all these people not translating it that way? Because all you got to do is read the context. What does it mean over here? And when the unbelievers, we'll just go with this translation. Uh, and when the unbelievers plotted against you, 
They sought to either take you as a captive or have you killed or expelled you. They plotted and they planned, but Allah, oops, sorry about that. Allah is the best of the planners. Mm -hmm. Every, every single, the, the context is defining the word. So my point here is no, Allah does not, this is not, this is a misrepresentation of, I guess you can't even say that they're mistranslating it because there are no translations they're relying off of. These are 65 translations. Nobody is saying that. So obviously it is a misrepresentation of our scriptures here. I can make this a little bit bigger for you if you want to read that. I know you're probably looking on a phone, right? Yeah, but I can see it. I've got my glasses okay. on. I can see it. So when you read the context, or the context says, gosh, why do they keep doing that? The context keeps, I mean, it defines a word. They were plotting, hey, you know, we're going to either kill him. No, let's capture him. No, you know what? Let's banish him from this land. They were plotting and planning, but a lot of the best of the planners. So that's the right, I think, <laughs> translation of the verse. So, and also there's something we also need to understand from the biblical point of view. Um, inside Bible, God will send them, oh, right there, a strong delusion. The same teaching which they're complaining about is actually found inside 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. I was actually thinking about that exact verse before you brought it up. And another, another thing to put into context that I'm thinking of, uh, God is smarter than any human being mm -hmm. on the planet, period. And he's, you know, he's, he's even smarter than the devil. Even the, so the devil cannot outsmart God. So right. I think most Christians would agree with that. I think, you know, most Jews would agree with that, or, you know, most people would agree that nobody can outsmart God. Nobody can, you know, uh, get one over on him, I guess, mm -hmm. would be the best way to put it. So uh, just think of, of it in terms of, you know, uh, you know, God cannot be outflanked. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, well, well, you know, the, the, the dishonesty here is, and if you notice, they said Allah is the greatest of the deceivers. There is no translation of the Quran which translates it that way. 65 we saw. And if you notice, they didn't put any kind of reference for like which translation they're going to because I've checked them all. There's no such thing, you know. And so it, it is a mystery. It is clearly this is this is deception here. You know what, what they're doing here. Uh, and, and then how are you going to explain the Bible that it says, and for this cause, Allah shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe in a lie. Now, the same argument is now going to be against them. So, so obviously, there's these are really bogus arguments, as we can see. Do you, so, I don't know. Do you have any questions on this? Or we could probably move on to the next one. Uh, I can't really think of anything, you know, off yeah. the... Well, wait a minute. Actually, uh, uh, the comparison, when you watch that video, mm -hmm. uh, it says that, it, it then points to the Bible and says that uh, Satan is the father of lies. So what right. I guess the person presenting it, doing it is saying that, that Allah and Satan are the same because in the Bible, it says that Satan is the father of all lies. And then it, mm -hmm. and then it calls Allah the greatest of all deceivers. And right. Which the Quran does uh, not say. Right. And, and so, and I didn't know that. So there's no, there's no translation from the Arabic that claims that, that Allah is the best of all deceivers, somebody right. who tells falsehoods. Yeah, and I can right. let me show you how you can get this link, which I just had. Uh, so all you gotta do, the website I'm using where you can kind of verify stuff, you, you, you can just type like Surah 8, verse 30, uh, Islam away, awakened, like that. And then uh, you'll see here are all the translation control F, B E C E I V E R. Uh, she, Samira, was the only one, but only in the sense she put in, in the parentheses, schemers. And I'm banging on my keyboard. Let's bang on it. Control F. Nobody else is, <laughs> is doing that. But if you look at what she meant, she meant a schemer that you're, and because the context says it all right here. They're trying to deceive and scheme and trying to make all these plots and plans. That's what the context is. So, right. So we, I guess we're, uh, I guess that that issue has been, I think, uh, 
clarified. And so uh, let's go to the next one, which is a more serious charge. Jesus describes himself, I guess, as uh, in the Bible, the king of the kings. Yet there is a hadith, or actually, let me let me get to the port, portion which they actually talk about it here. Yeah, um, exactly. That one is the strongest, the strongest attack. The strongest yeah. attack that I could see out of that whole presentation was, it says that uh, now I can't remember the hadith, which you know I can't I quote it, it word for word, but, but yeah, you know the one I'm talking about. It, yeah, it says yeah. that Allah is telling Muhammad that uh, the most awful sight in his eyes on the day of resurrection is a man who calls himself Malik al Amalak, which I guess is translated uh, the King of Kings. And of course the Bible says that Jesus is the King of Kings. Yeah. Uh, and so basically the, go. yeah. Okay. There, yeah. That's the one. Right. Okay. So here's a, we can, we can, if you read it within the context, you will see it is when this is not referring to Jesus. Why? First of all, the Quran praises Jesus in many passages in the Quran. Inside chapter, uh, this is Surah Maida, chapter, uh, chapter, I think that's chapter Surah, three or two, Surah four, verse 116. It says over here, or actually, says not the verse, um, or the verse which I'm talking about. Um, all right, we're done with this one. Uh, this one. Um, okay, yeah, here we go. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, it says here, it talked about Jesus. This, it says, uh, remember when the angels, O Maryam, uh, it said, oh, Allah will give thee good news of a word from him whose name is Messiah, son of Maryam, a man of status in this world in the hereafter. Here you'll see it is basically the word there is honored. He's an honored person. He's a prophet of Islam. And by no means does the Quran in any way denigrate Jesus the Quran praises Jesus. The Quran also says inside the following verse over here. It says, oh, Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my mothers as gods besides Allah? He says, pure are you. It does not behove me to say what is not right for me to say so. You, and so basically Jesus denies making any claim of divinity. So when Muhammad, when Muhammad is, has, we should understand from the Islamic point of view, number one, Jesus is honored. And, and the, if you believe Muhammad is the author of the Quran, he doesn't believe Jesus claimed to claim to be the king of kings or, or God or anything like that. That's clear from the, from the text of the Quran. So, okay. when we actually, so when we actually go to the Hadith, which is being quoted, look at over here. The most wretched person in the sight of Allah on the day of resurrection is, uh, and the worst person and, and target of his wrath will be the person who is called Malik, al -Am, the king of the kings. Now look at this part. For there is no king but Allah. That's the context. Again, now if you go back to the video, you see this highlighted person, portion? I don't see it in here. They cut off the text which says, oh, but there's no God but God. That's what I mean. That's ridiculous. Okay. Why didn't they quote the whole Hadith? So, the, so is, um, the, they quoted like the, the part which they cut off was the part which gives the context. For there is no king but Allah. Muhammad doesn't believe Jesus claimed to be Allah. We read it. So how, how could this be referring to Jesus? Muhammad said, look, I don't think Jesus... Or if we say uh, uh, Muhammad is the author of the Quran, he says, no, I'm sorry, Jesus didn't claim to be God. And this is what he says. So this verse is actually talking about you. This is talking about me, boneheads who are going to make this title to themselves. Don't call yourself the kings of the king. That's for you and me. I hope that's, <laughs> it doesn't get any more clear to this. But the part which is unforgivable, this gives the context. For there is no king but Allah. He didn't, they didn't quote it. They misquoted it in here. They cut off that portion in this video. Come right. on, man, that's ridiculous. That's, de that's deception again. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, context matters. That's, yeah. that's for sure. And, I mean. it, and, and here he goes into explanation what he means. Look, here's another hadith. It says, 
Abu Darda reported God's messenger as saying that God the Most High says, I am God whom there is no God, master of kings, the king of kings. This is a title for only God. And so, again, this is, I, I don't know, do you, do, is there any, let me ask you this question. Is there any room for doubt now in the fact that this is not referring to Jesus? Right. Well, I would just simply ask, uh, who, who is uh, Allah referring to then? Is he just referring to any one person? And I that's mean, referring or, to you, me, anybody who comes and tries to give himself this title. Okay. And, so, the, and the Quran makes it clear the Bible has been changed. So just because you read it in the Bible, it doesn't mean anything. We accept that the Bible has been changed by man. Right. So, so in the day of resurrection, then it could mean that anybody... So I guess the day of resurrection is also the day of judgment in Islam. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. Okay. So could it possibly mean that, so when Allah is judging each one of us, ju could he be judging somebody who, who has been a dictator, who has been, uh, you know, somebody who has uh, declared themselves Lord of all peoples of some type, you know, like the Genghis Khans yeah. of the world, the Adolf or, or, or the, of the emperor, world. emperor uh, Hirohito of Japan and during the World War II war. What people don't know about the history of this is we were actually at war with God. Emperor Hirohito claimed to be God on Earth, <laughs> you know, right. and so there. This is for people like that. There are a lot of people who have claimed to be God on Earth. And um, I don't know if he recanted in the end of his divinity claim, but yes, it's referring to those people. Right. Okay. Well, that that definitely changes the uh, the context here. You know, that mm -hmm. puts a whole new way of thinking on it. Okay. So, um, as for the other uh, claims in the video, it oh, calls the destroyer. The destroyer. Okay. The destroyer. Okay. The bringer of death, uh, the restrainer. Okay. I mean, just a bunch of different different stuff. Let's go to the destroyer one. Um, where is it? Um, where are we? Right. So the um, yeah, Satan is a destroyer. And so yeah. here, okay. Okay, if any person who is an Arab, I'm just kind of picking up the language, you know, like ad hoc least, but can yeah. look at this word and can start <laughs> laughing. This is mayit. Mayit means death. God is the one who brings death. Okay, now let's go back to the 65 translations of the Quran. Let's look up chapter 57, verse two. Let's see how many of these people translated as destroyer this is laughable this being like you can go and what's really crazy about it it's like the language a lot of the words of the quran are actually used in everyday language so you can go literally on the streets of saudi arabia and morocco and say may it may it they're gonna be go well, who's dying who's death i mean it's kind of funny but let's go back let's go to our 65 translations of the quran let's look up 57 verse 2 Surah 57, verse 2. And let's go to... Um, you know, uh, when we get done with this, I'm going to be sending you some more stuff that I'd like yeah. you to take a look at. I mean, cause, man, I've got all kinds of stuff that's being said. Like, th there's videos on YouTube uh, by this website called Armageddon News mm -hmm. that claims that Saudi Arabia is going to be destroyed by a nuclear weapon from Iran right. uh, during during the final days and that the Mahdi, who I guess is the savior in Islam, is going antichrist and that this Mahdi is going to sit in God's temple in Jerusalem and claim to be God and that Muslims will accept this person claiming to be God. And, and when I watched that, I couldn't help but think to myself, I am hard pressed to believe that that Muslims would accept any man claiming to be god right no be, way that's crazy they m muslims would reject that man wholeheartedly and would fight against him in two seconds but that's another matter <laughs> okay <laughs> but so 
So let, yeah. let's, let, let's look at this word. They say that Allah is the destroyer. 57 verse 2. So we oh. look up 57. Did I just lose my, my reference? Oh, yeah, hold on. I just lost that. Okay, Surah 57 verse. Where was it? Yeah, here we go. Surah 57 verse 2. Control F. Search for the word destroyer. I'm banging on my keyboard. There's not a single translation. <laughs> Everybody is translating it as the one who gives death. Let's even let you can even go to the people who are not even Muslim. Like George Sales is a very let's go to the Orientals because these are people who criticize Islam and stuff like that. Non-Muslims, Orientalists. Arthur John Arbery. No, George Sales, Edward. What is this? This is bonkers. They're just making stuff up. You know, it's ridiculous. Again, all of this can be verified by just going into Google, type Islam Awakened, and just and just give the verse numbers right over here. So let's go to the other one. Maybe 1523 might have something. Uh, I actually myself have not even checked it. Let's go to 50. So let me hit control F again. Can you see where I put, I put the word destroyer in here? You, can you see that? D -E -S -E yeah, I, I can I barely see it. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Okay, I'm banging on my keyboard. Okay, not, so let's go to the other one. Uh, 1523. We're up 15. Okay, here we go. Uh-oh, we have a whole bunch of translations of death again. Let's control F, D-E-S-T-R-O-Y, destroyer. I'm banging. Can you hear this? I can hear you. Yeah. There Loud is question. no searches. Nobody is translating it uh, as he's this great destroyer. Okay, so at this point, you know, anybody who has done any bit of research can look at this and say, wait a second. You know, there, I mean, this is, I don't even understand what. Let's, let's go to another one. Let's do another one. I haven't even, uh, 7158. Maybe 7158 might have one. Who knows? 7158. 158. Nothing. Let's type death. There you go. Everybody is translating it as death. So cause to die. He's the one who brings life and causes to die. That's what the well, verse even, is saying. Even, well, even Christians will believe that, 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 that he gives life and, you know, decides when someone's numbers up. But anyway, go ahead. Oh, my, I'm kind of curious. Well, the guy who, see, and I think what it is, the vast majority of people, like you pointed out the problem, if you go and you try to look on Google, Muslims are not responding to this at all. So they can get away with this. And the average Christian, even, uh, you know, he's not going to know about websites like Islam Awakened. He's not going to have like understanding of how to pull up these hadith. The guy can get away with saying whatever he wants. And I think that's what's happening here. Because this is not, I mean, you can't even, we can't, I can't what's, so con, what's so hard about this discussion? You can't even say he's misinterpreting the Quran because there is no translation of the Quran which says what he's saying. You can't even say he's misunderstand. Where is he getting this stuff from? You know, right. it's bonkers. But anyways, <laughs> it's fine. You know, I mean, it's, and that's why I, you know, when I, when you sent me that video, I looked it over. I'm like, what the, get out of here. This is so ridiculous. But to a, the guy who doesn't have these tools, who may not have the background, oh, it's gonna be, ooh, oh, I mean, look at this awesome music they play. I mean, I gotta play this music for you. Yeah. I... <laughs> God destroyer. Yeah, when I, when you're listening to that, you're reading these verses, you're thinking, you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, it sounds I, I, convincing. I mean, I'm trying to put it into words. I mean, you, you see the verses and you hear that, you think that, 
you think that you know that of a of a cataclysmic battle between God and the devil when you hear that music and you read and you read those verses, and mm. you know what? But so I saw that and I thought, well, I don't know if I want to you know look into Islam anymore now, you know, not knowing any better, and so mm. I I quit thinking about it for a while, but but then you know. I felt something say, you know, don't, don't give up just yet, you know, keep, keep looking into it and, you know, ask, maybe ask Mr. Ahmed what he has to say about this and, and Sabil Ahmed, who's another, uh, yeah. very nice man. Have you had a very chance to meet Sabil? Uh, I've talked to him once on the phone. Uh, I sent him an email about this same material that I sent you, uh, last night. I haven't heard back from him yet. I know he's a very busy man. I know he, uh, so I'm sure he'll respond to me, you know, in time. But but you have in the meantime, and uh, you know, I, I, I I am friends with Sabio, uh, and I'll reach out to him. And yeah, uh, yeah. so I want to I want to do one more if I if I could. This one about I will cast terror into the hearts of the disbelievers. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have all the time in the world. You can go over okay. every one of them if you want. This is actually quite, you know, informative. Yeah. So. So here, they, if you notice, they say, we shall cast terror into the hearts of the disbelievers because they joined in worship other than Allah. Or actually, there was, there was one they're quoting here, uh, which is, uh, I want to specifically address here. Um, 831. Actually, I can't find it. But let's just do that one, which I just basically showed you. Okay. We will cast terror into the hearts of the disbelievers. Now, if you... If you take that into context with something like September 11th, it almost looks like God is almost calling for this type of horrific type of destruction, like what we saw on September 11th. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least that's what I that's what I got from it, you know. And I think a lot of people, when they read that, and of course that was a very satanic act. You see this type of mass killing of thousands of people, innocent people are dying. And they've done nothing wrong to anybody and they're being killed, you know, in this horrible, merciless way. So that's satanic. I mean, that's like, it's, you don't have to, like, you don't have to make a strong case to say, okay, any religion which teaches that, that's got to be from Satan or something like that. So at least when you look at it from this context, uh, you know, casting terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve because they joined in worship with Allah. However, what does that mean in Islam? What does casting terror into the hearts of the disbeliever mean from the Quranic, or you could say from the Islamic perspective? I will give you three references, uh, and we'll go over here. Let me make this a little bigger. This is taken from Sirah Ibn Ishaq, or you could say the biography of Muhammad. And um, let's go over here. And this is actually taken from the book of Rahik al Maktoum, and I'll I, I can I can give you that if you want. So when when the when you hear about here's we see the same thing. The siege did not last long for Allah. It's talking about a in a battle. Uh, for the Allah, the Almighty, cast horror into the hearts of the disbelieving Jewish people in this battle. Uh, and they are willingly offered to comply. So if you look at the context here, the point of casting fear into the heart of the disbeliever was so that they can put down their weapons and not fight and they will surrender. So, and it says over here, the messenger of Allah sees the weapons and land and houses and wealth and, and other, and, oh, here we go. The booty was exclusively the Prophet Sallallahu because no fighting was involved. They can go back home to their families and kids that because Allah casted terror into the hearts of the disbelievers that they had their swords in their hand. You know what? I don't want to do this. They threw it down and they said, okay, we will comply now. We will comply to the whatever is the orders. You know, you see that puts a completely different context than, than just taking that verse at its face value. I mean, if you just take the verse terror into the hearts of the unbelievers at face value without putting it in the proper context, then it's going to make it look like, oh, he did. I, I mean, like a September 11th type thing. Yeah. yeah is so now whenever I read any religious text, 
and, and again, that's why uh, I decided to come to you about this video. When I really, when I read any religious text or any historical document, we have to interpret it based on the customs, the traditions, and the practices of the time. We have to look at the complete story that's involved in the verse at the mm -hmm. during the during the time. So. And I would say that with the Bible, with the Torah, with anything, like when you look at something Jesus said, the apostles said, or whoever, you have to look at it through the context by which they were, uh, they were preaching it. Like, like when you read the Bible, it talks about uh, the unforgivable sin being the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And so people think that if they say anything negative against the Holy Spirit, that that sin's going to be unforgivable. But when they put the verse in the proper context, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. The Pharisees were witnessing the miracles that Jesus was doing, and they were attributing those miracles to Satan. So Jesus looked at the Pharisees and said, you know, any, any sin and all manner of evil will be forgiven unto men, but the uh, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost will not be forgiven unto men. Mm -hmm. so, it, so, so, and the reason I'm making this comparison is to show people that when you put what Jesus said in the context there is completely different than what a mainstream uh, interpretation may be. And I'm just, I'm applying that same, uh, I'm applying that same way of looking at it with, with that verse. So mm -hmm. God, so what Allah basically did was he made the enemy afraid to exactly. wage so they would stop fighting. I mean, that's completely different than if you just say that he wants to cast terror into people. I mean, right, because the way it could be, yeah. I mean, the way it was presented is like a mass killing, like women, like hold, clutching her child and a, and a guy on top of her with a, with a knife. <laughs> this yeah. is for Allah. <laughs> That's the imagery I got, you know, when I was looking yeah. at that. And the music, especially in the background, I was like, oh, oh my God, you know. And so I want right. to show you another reference. Here's another example. Okay, here's another battle which they were fighting. Uh, it said the Jews went too far into their transgressions. And so the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, marched out with his soldiers uh, carrying this uh, uh, Hamza ibn Abu Muttalib carrying the, the standard of the Muslims and laid siege to the Jews for 15 days. But so Allah cast fear or into the hearts and they were obligated, obliged to defer to the messenger of Allah for their lives and everything. Okay, for their lives, wealth and judgment. So what was the decision made? Take your things and get out of here. Banu Kaneka handed over all their materials, wealth, war, and equipment. The Banu Kaneka are the Jews who set aside <clears throat> a fifth for his men. And after that, they were banished out of Arabia and they basically went to Syria. And that is the context again. So, and I've got many references. I mean, you can go through and you will find this that the disbelievers would get this fear into their hearts. And they would just literally drop their swords and weapons and say, okay, Muhammad, we'll, you, we, will, we will defer our case to you. And no one dies. Everybody gets to go home to their families. That's the point of why Allah said this inside our... And I mean, there's many references. And so, you know, one of the things I wanted to kind of mention here, uh, kind of a sore point. So I was ready to, with all these references in my for my debate, I've done four debates. One against Sam Shimon, uh, David Wood and and Bill Warner and all of these people and so I'm waiting to, to, to hit him with these references you know and so like for example the one I did with Sam Shimon on is Islam a religion of peace he doesn't even go there he doesn't even bring up anything about Islam being a religion of terror or anything like that I'm like okay I just sat up here for two and a half hours I paid all this money to fly out to Los Angeles to do this debate all right I guess we, we see eye to eye on this it ain't even 48 hours. These guys are right out there on the circuit spewing the same wrong message. Oh, wait a second, man. I just, Bill Warner was an example of this. It wasn't 48 hours. If you watch that debate I had with him, I picked up the Quran. I said, okay, Bill, this book is a book of peace. Do you have any problem with that? He's like, no, no, no. My problem is in the Hadith. So I'm like, all right now. All right, we're getting some progress here. 48 hours later, He's talking about how Islam is a religion of terror. Dude, we just sat here for two hours, man. What, what, and I, you, this is the time to raise it with me. My point here is they know they're going to get refuted. 
they know the, that I'm going to hit them with references. So they're pulling back. They said, no, 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 we're going to bring up some other issues. This Nadir guy. Four debates, they did that to me. And I, and I, I actually got on the phone one time. And one of the uh, uh, people who organized this debate, I said, what's up with this? I said, I sat with Sam Shimon for two hours in that debate, is Islam religion of peace? The dude never, the issue of terror was resolved. He didn't bring it up. So why are you people still saying this? You know, and so it's, you know, it's so hard trying to chase after these people. I just gave up. Just do your debate. And whatever they say, 10 minutes after that, just let it go. They're going to continue to produce these videos. They're going to continue to say the same defeated argument. But anyway, so that's my complaint uh, out of all this. <laughs> I would, you know, uh, and I know this is kind of off the topic here, but but I just have to say this, okay? All of these people that are attacking Islam, going after Islam, whatever, they don't look at the own problems that we are having in our own country and within our own cultures. And I don't have a problem with people uh, being critical of any religious faith as, as long as they want to sit down and have a discussion, have a debate, you know, look at, mm -hmm. you know, different interpretations, schools of thought or whatever. I mean, that's, you know, that's what makes us human. That's what makes us, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a, capable of critical thinking. But what, what really just, uh, I can't help but shake my head. We don't, we as Americans, a lot of times don't look at the problems we have in our own countries before attacking other civilizations or other other faiths or whatever and i just think it you know i mean jesus himself said uh something along the lines of and i can't quote the verse you know directly but before you uh uh cast a stone at your brother you know consider the beam that's in your own eye or something or with or, a needle like you, a needle in your own eye or something like that no i know the yeah. verse you're talking about yeah and and it, judge not least you be judged and so mm -hmm. uh you know, now me, I'm trying to be more open-minded. You know, I, I've reached a point in my life where uh, the true path to enlightenment is to listen to what the other side has to say, and then, you know, compare that to what you've been taught. You, know, you might come up with a different viewpoint. You never know. And, and so uh, I've been looking at Islam, and again, I can't help but notice many problems in Muslim countries, I mean, say what you want about Islam, but they don't have a lot of the same problems in their countries as we do in ours. I mean, you know, it's just a fact. I mean, I'm not saying they don't have their fair share of problems. We as human beings are imperfect. We make mistakes. I mean, that, that's in any you know, walk of life. I mean, yeah, they, in some parts of the Islamic world, they may experience, you know, terrorist attacks or whatever or conflicting you know tribal rivalries or whatever it is but i mean we have plenty of political divisions in this country here we have plenty of problems here and so mm -hmm. uh you know i was just looking at how in muslim countries the problems with uh, violent crime is pretty low i mean mm -hmm. when you look at uh <laughs> in terms of overall murders and rates and assaults and you know, so we have to ask ourselves, why is that? Mm -hmm. Could it possibly be that, you know, maybe their moral convictions and religious convictions, you know, they, they believe quite strongly in them and they don't happen as much in those countries as they do here. And I love this country. I, I do. You know, I love being an American. You know, I love, you know, the freedoms that we have here. Uh, but we still need to uh, look at ourselves and, and figure out how we can be better. And I've been looking at the Quran and there's a lot of things within it that I actually agree with. I actually like how they take care of the elderly, uh, where I think how we take care of the elderly in this country is, and this is just my opinion, when, when you become old in this country, a lot of families will just throw their relatives into a nursing home and say, see you later. And just, they leave them there you know, to die. And that's just, they may come visit them once in a while, but that's it. You know, where uh, I was watching this documentary here on YouTube, where they really take care of their elderly. 
in Muslim countries. You know, they make sure all their needs are met. They come visit them. I believe in one, I forget which country it was, they actually require their citizens to go and visit their, mm -hmm. their parents, their grandparents, you know. And so, uh, so, you know, I've been looking at Islam, you know, quite a bit. I also, uh, I also sent you an email. I don't know if you remember uh, Islamic bacon, mm -hmm. like how they don't charge interest if you get a loan or something like that. And then I look at, you know, and, and I'm not somebody who, who hates big banks or, you know, I don't, I don't care if people want to make a profit. I mean, that's fine. But when I look at some of the interest rates, you know, that banks in this country charge and how they increase, how if it's not a fixed rate, they could change it from 2% to 10% overnight and then take somebody's house. Mm -hmm. It just seems like a more fair economic system in Islam, I guess. And so I know a lot of that's unrelated, but I, I was just, you know, uh, why don't we save the rest of this for another yeah, conversation? Definitely. You know? Yeah. Keep, keep searching. I mean, if you uh, find any other issues, which, you know, you think may need, need to be addressed, we could always do another one of these uh, kind of sit down discussions. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And, and so, you know, I just, I'll make myself available to you to answer any of your questions. So we could just uh, edit here, end it here and uh, we'll keep in touch then. All right. Thanks. Not here. Good okay. talking to you. Thanks a lot. I'll let you go. Bye-bye. Um,